Hello and welcome to Karen Pulse Bank Gets Humanitarian Program where we showcase the world's unreported stories. Case in point this week, we're taking you to Thailand on patrol with the monk police. Strange but true. A team of FBI-esque Buddhist value enforcers trawling the streets of Bangkok on the lookout for imposters. They hunt for the wayward clerics who use the saffron robes to camouflage their fall from grace. Fake monks who abuse the rules that define their status in a fiercely traditional society. Buddhist monks' official role is to spread the teachings of Dharma, to pray and to bless. They rely on charity and gifts in exchange for mindfulness and wisdom. But as you will see in this report, some have seriously lost their way, indulging in sinful activities like drinking alcohol and begging for money. Some are simply bogus Buddhists. Once caught, they're literally tried and exposed before a jury of clerics. But others, more worryingly, are former members of the faith who've lost their way and, as a result, risk being ostracized by society. Our journalist, Cyril Payen, Solomon Kane, joined the hunt for the bad monks and sent us this fascinating report. A tattoo session in a Buddhist temple in the suburbs of Bangkok. This young truck driver has just been possessed by the spirit of the tiger, his favorite animal. Like him, thousands of Thais come to this temple every month to find invulnerability and strength by being tattooed by monks. This is far from the original teachings of Buddhism, which arrived here in the 6th century AD. But there is no problem with mixing belief and superstition here in a country where sacred references are everywhere. The tiger is very strong. His tattoo is famous because he's very respected and gracious. All other animals are inferior to the tiger, including humans. As for the monkey tattoo, it's called Hanuman. It gives you courage. Hanuman is never afraid of going to fight a battle. He's afraid of nobody. It makes you a great warrior. And then you have Salika, the bird, very charming. With this tattoo, you have more charisma. You will charm people with your voice and will do better in business. In order to counter excesses and abuses among Thailand's half a million monks, the clergy had to take some measures. It created the monk police, a special unit composed of untouchable monks. Come over here. Here's our great monk who inspires us. He's the most senior of the monk police. You know, our society is infested with fake monks, fakes and cheaters. This is the reason why our group was created, to stop them, to clean Thai society of this disease. We are at their headquarters. It is 6 o'clock in the morning, the time for the monks' only meal of the day. Me and my colleagues, our mission is to implement a strict internal discipline among all the members of the Buddhist clergy. I've always been a monk. I have always lived this way, just like for my own life. The right practice, the right application of theories and the teachings of Lord Buddha must be followed by all the monks. It requires a lot of sacrifices. It is sometimes dangerous, but it is very important. The sun has just come up. We head out on a patrol in the streets of Bangkok with the Thai clergy's untouchables. The monk police chief, in command for 30 years, supervises the operation. He's inside the market. How many of them do you see? Hurry up, come fast. About 10 monks, accompanied by civilian aides, set out. The deputy chief goes to apprehend the suspect. We got one. He's totally drunk. Every morning in Thailand, monks are fed by the mainly Buddhist population. It is the most common time of day to find fake monks. You don't have enough. You can't help, can you? I would really like to kick your ass. 
And you are just out from jail. How many years? It is so easy to get money this way, by cheating people. Come on, stand up. We take him. In a wheelchair, this man was asking people for money, a serious offense for a monk. He is not handicapped, he can walk, and he is drunk. And to make matters worse, the monk police know him already. He is apprehended and taken away. Come on, we have to leave quickly. Look, you can see. He's acting. He can walk. He can walk. What a big liar. It is the end of the patrol and the beginning of the troubles for this fake monk. Let's go. An average of about 10 fake monks are arrested every day in Thailand. The hunt never ends. Sometimes it turns violent for us. We often have fights. Some of us have been attacked. Others have been strangled by the offenders. Some of the fake monks sometimes have a weapon hidden in their bag, like a knife. So it's often dangerous to go out in the field. But for them, they carry no weapons. That is out of the question. No, no, it's totally forbidden to carry a weapon. It's a Buddhist principle. Anyway, we don't need any. We know how to fight. We can fight with karate and taekwondo. <laughs> back at the headquarters, the monks come back with their prisoner. Look, he's drunk. He can't even stand. His problem is alcoholism. You're shaking a lot. Is it because you want to fight or because you're scared? Our mission is to facilitate the job of the monks. I'm very proud to help them in this mission. On this morning, three stand before the monk's tribunal. Hey you, you know that you are going direct to hell? Do you know that? The questioning starts. Who is your master? Which temple? Answer me. I have no other way but to ask for money. It's for my medicine. I'm very sick. Yes, we got them. They're right here. The verdict is given. The first monk is sentenced to be disrobed. The other wrongdoer is waiting for his turn. He's very scared. I'm pleading for clemency, to remain free. My daughter is still young. Who is going to take care of her? I hope the master will pity me and my life. All right, it's over for him. He's a normal man again. This monk has been condemned to return to civilian life. He won't wear the saffron robe ever again. One last scolding, and he will disappear. For the alcoholic monk, it's another story. His case is far more serious. No need to bother disrobing him. He is a repeat offender. The police, real police this time, arrive to take over the case. He uses a fake monk identity card. According to the criminal code, he must be jailed for six years. Anyway, just take him away. I don't want to see him anymore. He must leave now. And there's no way he's taking his robe away with him. He will leave as a civilian. It's 
In fact, we are combat monks. We don't stay in a temple praying like normal monks. No. Our duty is to go to the front line, to the streets of Thailand, to track every abuse and fraud, and we must prevail. I believe that if nobody pushes society towards better education and towards better development in this country, miserable living conditions will always push some men to abuse others by using religious faith as a cover. The police van is on the way. This one? Are you sure it gets well? A knife and sword vendor comes right into the monk headquarters. It's a sword used for killing pigs. It is the end of the religious ploy for this convict. Don't release him, okay? He has to pay his debt. It is the fifth time we caught him. He must stay behind bars, and for good. This fake monk was later sentenced to three years in jail. Well, that's it for this edition of Caring. I hope you enjoyed it. You can watch that episode again as well as previous editions on our website. Until the next time, goodbye.